a public bidding war in private equity. How often do we see this? We don't see this a lot at all. Oftentimes we find out about it after the fact when we see all the SEC documents and we hear about board of directors being approached and considering various offers now and again. This is one that's a little different because there was an announced deal and then lo and behold another private equity firm jumping into the mix. Maybe. Why would Blackstone want to do this? Well, it's really interesting. When you look at the numbers for all the Sturm and Drang, this may still be a bit of a cheap deal. I mean, our colleagues downstairs have done some great analysis on this, that even at $15 a share, this is still one of the cheapest tech deals ever. Financing is available from the debt side. Obviously, the cash is available in private equity coffers. They're at least going to take a look at it, it seems. All right, Jason, hold that thought. Corey, I'd like to bring you in on that point. When we talk about the motivation for Silver Lake, who has already put its cards on the table, this potential with Blackstone, what can be done with Dell? I mean, there are certain parts of the business that are still attractive, right? Well, you know, it's a very interesting business. And, and, you know, to to Jason's point about the tech valuations, the the real question here is, you know, tech gets big valuations because tech is presumed will have great growth. The fundamental question here is, is there great growth in the future of the PC? Is the downturn in the PC business a result of a change to tablets and phones? I mean, I I sit right here in front of me. I've got my phone. I've got my tablet. I've got a PC. You know, is everyone going to have a PC in the future? Are they going to have this combination of devices? Has the IT shift from the increase in smartphones and and, and tablets uh, and away from PCs, is that a permanent change? Or is it merely a cyclical turn down in the PC? And I think that you've got to answer that question before you can determine what the valuation of Dell is going to be. And Corey, bigger picture, I mean, a lot of people have asked, what can Dell do as a private company that it couldn't do as a public company? Any kind of development of thought on that? Yeah, great question. So do they kill, for example, the, the worst business at Dell has not been the PC business. It's been the mobility business, a big part of that laptops. Is there a future for laptops in a world where, where uh, tablets are getting stronger and stronger? If it isn't, they could kill that big business, take the lump that the public markets might not allow, allow the server business, which is actually growing quite nicely at Dell, last quarter grew at 18% year over year, allow the server business to continue to grow, higher margins, allow the services business to continue to grow, allow the software business to continue to grow, so that they would emerge uh, without the crummy mobility business, without some of the low margin businesses that they haven't been very successful in of late, and emerge with the higher margin businesses, and let that cyclical downturn in PCs cycle. So there was a cyclical upturn. That's certainly what you've got to think that Michael Dell and others, and now these new bidders are looking at. Okay, so Corey, you pretty clearly pointed out there is still value added here. But Jason, I want to bring you in on this point. I mean, Blackstone has not had the best track record as far as big tech takeovers go. Silver Lake, the one that's already in the mix, arguably has a much more stable tech track record. Well, and there's a twist here, of course. As you know, Glenn Hutchins, one of the founders of Silver Lake, worked at Blackstone and, and helped do some of those early tech deals back in the mid-90s. Now he's potentially on the other side of the table. This has not been an area of strength for Blackstone. I guess the question becomes, to Corey's point, is this a tech play or really a big business overhaul? Blackstone has been successful in big deals. It's done some of the biggest of all time, and it is the biggest player in its field, $210 billion under management, all told. And and $210 billion, Jason, as you point out, they have to do something with it, right, To, to make shareholders happy, too. Like, if you have that money, you have to use it. That's absolutely right. I mean, as you know, private equity funds only last for a certain amount of time. They've got to do big deals right now. Blackstone managing the biggest private equity pool out there.